Hello again, and thank you for staying with us. Now, as the cost of living continues to soar in the country, a survey by TPN Credit Bureau shows that 25% of parents did not make any payment towards their children's school fees last year. The survey was completed in both private and government schools where fees are charged. To speak more on how parents can deal with this challenge, we're now joined by CEO of School Day, that's Paul Yesterazen. Paul, a pleasure to have you on the program this afternoon. Now, we do know that uh, parents are hard-pressed by these uh, tough economic times and uh, rising interest rates as well. But maybe a good starting point would be for us to understand the significance of uh, uh, paying school fees. What does this actually do uh, for some of our public and private schools as well? Kantla, thank you. And yes, it is good to be in studio and on show with <laughs> yes. you. And the, the real facts around education in this country dictate that we have an understanding of what the commitment is. Yeah. The commitment is that as a parent, as a guardian, as a community, as a family, when we have a child who has to go to school, there are a total of 200 days in a school year that a child will attend school. And take that over the 12 years and extrapolate that. That's yeah. 2,400 education days. We have to keep those children in school and we have to ensure that our schools have the ability to deliver the curriculum at a standard that escalates higher than what it has been and aspires to get children in matric right through their schooling years and do that efficiently and mm. effectively. But as highlighted by this uh, research by TPN Credit Bureau, there are these uh, concerning trends, especially when it comes to parents not paying uh, for their child's school fees. Maybe talk us through that aspect. In Clankla, I've just been at a conference with 150 schools, part of a school business management association conference that ran for two days here in Gauteng with attendees from schools across the country and their bursars and business administrators at the schools. The harsh facts are parents are not prioritizing the payment of school fees. Mm. The, the, the servicing of debt over the last two years has gone from a prime lending rate which was 7% up to, um, we now know at 11,75% yeah. is, is the prime rate. So the cost of borrowing in indebted households has just been ratcheted higher and higher. We've had 10 consecutive rate increases, and hopefully we're at the last. And, and what we're seeing and what I'm hearing from these bursars is that the dire straits that they're in are driven by the fact that parents do not prioritize paying the school fees anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be, and we go back decades, where I paid my school fees before I paid and attended to anything else. Mm. Now, the lien on payments and commitments it doesn't prioritize school fees any longer. But have we actually understood the impact that uh, the non-payment of fees is having on this, some of these schools, especially private schools, that uh, solely rely on uh, these fees? Well, when a school is missing its budget... So annually the school sets a budget, mm. they know what they're anticipating, there's a school fee that they're anticipating to yeah. collect, and when that budget misses and parents don't pay, and we're seeing budget deficits of between 20 and as high as 40% in public schools, when they don't meet the budgets, they cannot adequately resource the school and cannot adequately increase the number of interns, a number of teachers, they cannot build the wherewithal to deliver, they don't have the capacity. So a non-fee-paying parent, mm. a non-fee-paying pupil in the school comes at a burden to the balance of the school and the rest of the school. And that's why I earlier said it's our responsibility as South African citizens. Everyone who's a viewer out there now, what can you be doing? What ought you to be doing? Yeah. Uh, my views are prioritize the payment of school fees to the school. There's a commitment when you take your child to school that you ought to be fulfilling. This is not a... I'm taking my child to school and the expectation mm. is it will all map out for me. We have to meet that commitment and honor it. We get that right, we will have our children properly educated. But I'm sure there are uh, measures or options that uh, parents uh, have to maybe even possibly renegotiate with the school, uh, possibly at terms or maybe to pay a lesser amount uh, to cover some of these gaps. There most certainly is a structure in place. It enables parents to go to the school, mm. and parents actually cannot issue demand and summons on parents who have not paid right. until they've had counsel with them. They will, they will call in and meet with parents and guardians and understand the financial pressures that that family are under and the, and the wherewithal that they have to pay. So there is an exemption process where if you are struggling financially, the school will be aware of it 
and they can make plans a, a, and accommodate you accordingly. And that is in place, and it does happen. It places added resource burden on the schools because they have to have these interviews with, with mm. families who are battling financially. And unfortunately, uh, this also affects the learner themselves. If a parent doesn't pay, this, of course, will have a ripple effect on uh, the studies of the child. Are there any rights uh, that learners actually have to maybe protect them regarding the non-payment of fees here? Well, schools are not merciless. They mm. Typically, our, our public schools will not suspend a child from attending class. They will take the necessary recourse to collect arrear fees as right. they can. And the child, you know, in the home, the child is aware of what's going on. They know when mom and dad are not able to pay the fees. They sit in the classroom. They know what's going on with their peers. And I've, I've held for many a year, for, for decades, in fact, the involvement of parents mm. who actually get to walk the corridors in a school change the mindset of the child because the child walks a little bit taller when mom and dad are involved, caring, committed, attending meetings, meeting with teachers yeah. and making it work. And going back to focusing on the schools, I mean, is there any legal action that uh, they possibly could take against their par parents if there is this uh, big trend of uh, parents not paying for school fees? Well, yeah, that's why they actually do the interview and they yeah. understand what the parents' income and expenditure is and where mm. they're at mm. and what the commitment to the school is. And when they've assessed that, yeah. they then have the, the right to have recourse to the affordability factor says this family should be paid. Look at, look at what they, their lifestyle is. And here they're not paying our school fees. And that's got to be the conscience that weighs heavily on moms and dads and uh, grandparents and guardians. And that's why I say the family has a role to play. Mm. Because if we know that we're not paying that fee, we're putting that school on the back foot for delivery of what we're wanting for our children. We all want our children to be in the yeah. best environment with the best schools. And, and we're, we're appealing in our school day's world to parents to understand your commitment to plan to pay for the school days of your child's life. I know we have poor families who cannot afford mm -hmm. and government has infrastructure in place where there are no fee-paying schools where government carries that load. But where there are fees that are set, and parents, whatever that burden is, the priority has got to be, what do I pay that puts education ahead of all the other lifestyle apparent necessities that I seem to think are yeah. more important than my child's education? But in the same breath, I mean, are there any consequences or, or penalties that may be charged for parents uh, over non-payment here? Well, legally, yes. Yeah. You, you've signed the papers, you've agreed that you will pay the fee, mm. and unless you've gone to the school to find a way to alleviate some of that burden and negotiate it with them, the school has legal recourse to you, you will be blacklisted, you will be credit impaired, mm. and, and they have the ability to actually sue you, literally, for non-payment of the fees. And, and that's what is happening. Uh, we're seeing, and I saw even at this conference, there are companies that specialize in debt collection for schools only. They do no other debt collection but yeah. in schools. And, and that is also a compromised environment because uh, someone's running a business off the fact of the delinquent non-payers. Mm. And the school then still doesn't collect the full fee because there's a fee to be paying to the debt collector. So uh, there's also, uh, this also then requires or demands some level of proactiveness on the part of schools themselves. Uh, are we seeing any intervention from uh, some of our schools where uh, they might try to raise funds or find means to help uh, fill this gap? Well, it's, it's written into the infrastructure of schools that the school community, the school governing body, the school's parents association are given the blessing of the Department of Education to be able to say, yes, you can go and raise funds. Mm -hmm. So within a community, the community ought to be appealing to its immediate uh, parentage, businessmen in the communities to be able to table their burdens and get those businesses to be involved. Fundraising is a pivotal part of what schools are because it not only raises funds for the schools, but it builds some kind of social interaction with parents in a community to know that they've also stood taller because they've got involved to make a difference. And it's not necessarily about the haves and have nots. It's about how can I get involved in a program in the school that enables the school to generate income.
We've done that on our school days platform, yeah. incidentally. Yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting. I mean, a lot's been said uh, as I look through my info pack as well. But I, I want to get an understanding is as to whether there's been any discussion or proposal to also reform uh, the current schooling fee system here in the country uh, to make it more equitable or sustainable for both parents and schools as well. In front of that, that's an interesting debate because there is a, a set standard of how you qualify for um, some kind of alleviation of the payment of fees. It's in place. The school has got to follow that. If you don't earn, you don't have to pay the full fee. And there's a structure in place. Mm. It's, it's a challenging one because if you know that you want to get your child into a top-end, well-managed government school, yeah. um, and, and I need not make, mention the names, but the fees are around the 65,000 rand a year level to get your child into one of those schools. If you manage to get your kid in there and you're not earning, and you're not earning enough, you can get a full exemption on those fees, well, virtually a full exemption. And, and there's, that has to be addressed to make it more equitable because the balance of, of creating that um, ability for parents to get the exemption has got to be reviewed so that it gets brought in line and is fair for the schools because schools then also end up with parents who manage to get their child in there knowing that they will never be able to afford that fee. Yeah. And, and then they leverage off the fact that my child is in there, my child has to stay there. But I know I'm never going to meet the full fee requirement because I'm exempt. I don't earn enough. And then we also have, and I say let it weigh on the conscience of the parents, yeah. parents who um, they may be separated, divorced, and uh, they may be well divorced. And mom says, I don't earn anything. Mm. I don't have to mm. pay fees. In the meantime, dad's living it up in the lap of luxury. And, and we have to change that. Society's got to put education first, put our school fee payments first. I asked at this conference, is there any school represented here where you're collecting 100% of the school fees yep. and everybody folded their arms? <laughs> um, and when we yeah. went lower down, we, we established that uh, 20, 30, 40% of parents yeah. are, are ducking the bullet and um, it should be something we are proud about, that mm. we will put our children through education and pay and meet that commitment. When we started our conversation, Paul, we spoke about uh, the rising cost of living as uh, being one of the reasons why parents may be failing to pay for school fees. But uh, in your conversations, are there any other reasons that are being provided uh, by parents that uh, prohibit them from being able to keep up with these payments? Well, it's clearly understood. If, if you took the school fee in a year and you know your child is going to school next year and you start at the beginning of January this year and you set aside a savings discipline, mm that will enable you to go to the school at the beginning of the next year and pay your school fees up front. You will get a discount from the school for doing so. Yeah. And then you can continue with that same saving pattern over the next year. And if you put that in, plan, in place and have the discipline, what we have seen in the immediacy of how we live our lives mm. is that parents don't do that. The saving goes out the window. And, and we're wanting to create a, a planning tool for parents to be able to set aside the money, know that it's untouchable, yeah. and I will only ever pay school fees. Imagine if every child in this country had an education time account mm. Mm. to meet those 200 days a year, and knowing that whatever money they collected, saved, set aside, uh, by family members, by everyone else, it was ring-fenced yeah. to pay for my child's school days. And that's where we're heading in a direction. And what we want to do, we want to get... We want to get parents knowing that they can do this. Because imagine when you do settle that, um, that liability, that obligation up front. You can sit back and say, I'm saving now for the following year and the ensuing years. Right. And potentially if I keep building this, it's my education plan. Um, we know that a lot of the financial services companies have attempted to do this over time. Mm -hmm. But what does happen is the parent runs into some stormy situation. Yeah. They draw the money down and there's a Black Friday sale, and they end up mm. using the education funds that they were going to set aside. Um, and and we wanting to... So we've created a currency, yeah. education time points. And when you buy or earn or own or get education time points, right. you can only give them back to a school, a college, or a varsity. We have run out of time, but very quickly, uh, for parents who are watching this program and uh, find it, finding themselves in this dilemma, what's your word to them? Where they can't pay for school fees, that is. Reset. Go to the school, get involved, and plan 
for the future of your children's lives. Sacrifice the things that you really don't need and plan to pay for your children's future. Paul, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you. That's Paul Isteri, and he's the CEO of uh, School Day, talking us through this uh, TPN survey as many parents are struggling to pay for school fees.